Yeah. We're off to our first vlog. Number one. Numero uno. Um, <laughs> we're off to... Who are we we're, we're interviewing <laughs> the legend that is Jeremy Jennings. Just you wait. Yeah. Jeremy was... Um, it's going to be great. Head of prayer at HGB and Alpha for 20 years. 20 years. I'm, I'm 20 21. Years. That's so that's so pretty much my whole life. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And it's just an incredible opportunity to pick his brains. And super excited. Here he is, working away. <laughs> Setup time. Jeremy, thanks so much for doing this. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, start. We thought we'd do our first vlog interviewing Jeremy, who's a expert prayer guru. <laughs> oh, and, um, well, Jamie, could I say first yeah. that I, I um, heard the following definition of the word expert. Um, X is the unknown quantity and spurt is a drip under pressure. <laughs> so in that sense, I'm the expert, You're but the in, no, in no other sense at all. Um, so Jeremy, if you won 10 million pounds in the lottery, what would you do? Uh, I would have a big shock. Uh, um, I hope, I hope, but I haven't thought it through. I hope I would be very generous. Uh, share the blessing with lots of people, but um, uh, it's a lot of money, and I haven't really um, applied my mind that, to that interesting <laughs> yeah. question, Jamie. But thank you, you very much. What would you do with ten million? <laughs> what would I do? I would, um, I would give it all away. Oh, that's yeah. World peace. Perfect. World peace. Perfect answer. Yeah. Well done. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think my nose might be growing yeah. a bit. Why? Why do we need to pray? Uh, I would like to bat that back to you and say, why wouldn't we pray? Um, I mean, if you think about, uh, for example, a church, it, I suppose it's conceivably possible that a church might say, uh, prayer is so important, we're going to be the praying church. We're going to pray morning, noon and night. In fact, all we're going to do is pray. Or, on the other hand, you could be the church that says um, there is just there are so many needs, there's so much to do, so many people to be reached. Um, we're just going to be busy, 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 Act programs, activity, but we won't have any time to pray. And I think the answer lies in the middle. Uh, you want both. It's not all about prayer, but it's not about working and not praying. Um, if you can develop the concept of prayer-based activity. I mean, that's why I say, why wouldn't we want to pray? Because prayer brings the power of God to the proceedings. And the work of the church, for example, or other work for, uh, as well, you know, benefits by God's intervention. But we still got to do the work. Well, and we're interested in what you were like at school. Were you a good boy at school? I was you... more of a poacher than a gamekeeper. Probably school is where I learned to smoke and where I learned a little bit about alcohol and things like that and had fun uh, with friends, um, doing some of the above from time to time, as well as studying very hard yeah. for most yeah, of the of rest course. of the time, Jamie. For students at school, students at schools and at universities, how can prayer make a difference at their university, at their schools, in their own life? Uh, yeah. We need prayer personal prayer and I believe um, whatever the corporate context is whether that's a school a university a church whatever it is mm. uh, in the workplace it's great to get together to pray with other people as well and include that in in the mix well this is a good question um, describe the color yellow to someone who is blind soft bright comforting we had some questions come in from students and um, one of them was they understand the importance of prayer but they find it so boring <laughs> <laughs> and how, how can you make it more exciting how in the morning how can you feel excited that, yes i want yeah. to pray now yeah. we have the promise of the presence of god now we have to look at that and say how can that be boring mm. you know for christians that ought to be an absolute highlight and if it is boring then probably we need to examine the practice that we're involved with. Mm. And in the prayer meetings that we're involved with here, we've tried to develop variety. 
Uh, that's a variety of different ways of praying. We try and include a lot of worship. We try and keep things moving. We try and make it an enjoyable experience. We, we, we try and have humour. And I've noticed that at seven o'clock in the morning when our prayer meeting is, people are very generous when it comes to humour. They will <laughs> laugh at just about anything. <laughs> and they do. And so we laugh together. And we're hopefully real together. And uh, occasionally we will cry together because the issues can be deeply moving. So moving from that to when we're praying on our own, there are various ways of helping ourselves to, to pray. One of the ones I've known for longer than anything else is the one called ACTS, A-C-T-S, which stands for structuring your prayer time into adoration, confession, thanksgiving, <laughs> supplication. So that's okay, that's being a little bit systematic. I believe it's really valid, and I'm, I'm not greatly experienced in this, but I believe it's really valid waiting on God, just being peaceful before God, maybe reading some scripture, mm. maybe possibly having some worship music on in the background, um, mm. uh, maybe kicking leaves in the park and going for a walk and praying, you know, so mix it up. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, have a sort of special place where you kind of go with your cup of coffee to your comfortable chair and your cushion or whatever it is. And, and, you know, in that sense, have a little bit of discipline in the mix. And I want to then challenge the, the thesis because how can speaking with God be boring yeah. for a Christian? He's, he's our best friend, you know. He's for us. Mm. Um, uh, we can tap into his resources, his wisdom, his inspiration for our lives, you know. I mean, come on, supposing you're running a business or something like that, how helpful to involve God in the process. Yeah. And you can't do that without speaking with God. Um, who would win in a fight between Spider-Man and Batman? Superman. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> if someone wrote a biography about you, what do you think the title should be? Help. <laughs> Question mark. Help. <laughs> Help Jeremy Jennings. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. Help Jeremy Jennings. Yeah, I like that. I mean, we're all fascinated to know what answers to prayer. We'd love some encouragement and like prayer. No prayer really works and here's like a story. There are wonderful stories from the past. I mean, there was a guy called Jeremiah Lamphia back in mid 19th century in mm. downtown New York. He started a businessman's prayer meeting. He ran an advertisement. The first week, just a handful of people turned up. The second week, the numbers doubled. The third week, they doubled again. And it just spread like wildfire to the point where, where a whole number of churches were filling with people to pray at lunchtime and to pray. In the end, they were praying three times a day. And then people started to be converted. And by the time that thing was over, at least a million people were converted in that area. And it's sort of traceable back to that particular prayer meeting. And, you know. All started in prayer. It, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, J. Edwin Orr, who is a, a, a revivalist, uh, he, he's died now, but he, he, so, so, but he said, history is silent about any revival that did not begin in prayer. And um, I think that's right. Uh, I, I think uh, if you want to see a move of God, you want to start with prayer. You know, why did God ordain prayer? I, I, I don't know, um, Jamie. I do sometimes say that um, I, I, I feel um, a bit sorry for worship leaders because we know. <laughs> We're we interviewing know, Tim and Rachel Hughes next. Well, we know <laughs> that worship's going to go on forever. So as far as I can see, Tim Hughes gets no retirement. <laughs> once we get to heaven, we'll be able to speak to God face to face. So we won't, as far as I can see, need to pray anymore. So, so prayer leaders get to retire. Get attention, but Bob. I'm afraid worship leaders, as far as I can see, it's going to be, Except you're going life. to be leading worship forever. <laughs> um, so maybe that's why I'm a prayer leader. Plus the fact that I'm completely tone, tone deaf. When you uh, think back, Jeremy, not too long ago, I'm sure, when you were 18, you were just, when you were just finishing school, the end of your school time, and you're moving on to university, or you're just starting university, that age group, um, what would you do differently? What would you tell yourself back then? 
I would try to be far more intentional and far more focused. I was a bit of a drifter uh, and I've observed that people who are intentional, uh, people who are focused, they seem to be the ones who achieve a lot. And I suppose in the end, we, we all want to be in that category of people. Uh, I'm not talking about being intense, I'm talking about being intentional, having a plan. Uh, somebody once said that life comes in five-year bites and it's worth having five-year plans, if you like, for your life, but also longer term. And uh, we can relate prayer to that. We can seek God for the, uh, concerning the plan for our lives. But I would be intentional about that when you've um, found what that plan is. And I would even say this, it's much better to have momentum and um, movement than to be um, static. Because uh, if you think of a boat, you can't steer it if it's stationary, but if it's going along, you can use the rudder and change direction, but it needs to be, there needs to be momentum, there needs to be forward movement, and even if you're going in the wrong direction, God can turn your rudder and redirect you into the right direction, but be intentional, be focused, and God bless you. And finally, Jeremy, <laughs> this has been amazing, thank you so much for doing this, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jamie. Um, uh, 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 and um, uh, I wish all your listener, listeners every success and God bless you all. It'd be great if you could actually just pray for us all. Okay. Um, yeah, and this is the end. Well, Father, I want to pray for anyone who's watching this. I want to ask you to bless them and their lives, Lord. Bless them in the direction and the effectiveness of uh, their careers, their lives, their choices. Help them to make wise choices. And Father, help them with their journey through this world, because we're all on a pilgrimage. And we're all, Lord, traveling towards you. And please would you be with every person, Lord, who is watching this, and sincerely seeking you in their lives, seeking to follow you, Lord, would you bless them and would you make them richly fruitful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you have to bin the whole lot, please don't hesitate. Seriously, if it's awful and the hand looks too big and, you know, just bin it, all right? Right, we're done. We're all, all finished. All finished. All completed. Guys, thanks so much for joining us and um, yeah. Next, next, our next vlog. Who's our next vlog with? Our next vlog will be with Tim and Rachel Hughes. So um, watch this space. Which um, is coming next? We've done it. Mission, mission success. <laughs> mission success. Right? It's mission success. There's only one way to celebrate. <laughs>